Hey guys, Luca here. Today, I want to talk about resume. Some of the things that you should definitely avoid while providing a few tips on how to stand out. A little bit of background, like during my time as a software engineer at different companies that I have been with, I attended different career fairs, conferences. I had the chance to speak with candidates and they were passing me resumes. And the truth is when we are talking to you, we can only spend up to 15 seconds to quickly skim through the resume on average. So it's very important to put the important information on the top or make it easy for me to navigate your resume because I only get so much time. And based on that, the conversation that I have with you will be catering towards both what's on your resume as well as your interest. So the first thing and it's the most important thing I want to talk about is avoid irrelevant experiences. One of the most common mistakes I have seen on the resume is people putting irrelevant experiences varying from part-time jobs that's not really relevant to the type of roles you might be looking for or putting unnecessary category space failure on your resume such as hobbies, the clubs that you might be a part of or some leadership experiences that you had but it's not relevant to the role that you are looking for. So I would definitely recommend to stay focused and only put relevant experiences. You should be asking yourself if you were someone, let's say, interviewing, what type of skill do you want to see? What type of experience do you want to see? Does this make sense? Like are these connected? So I would say like definitely keep that in mind. The tip is to put relevant experiences on the top of the resume. Any internship you had as a software engineering role or something in tech that you know is related to the tech roles that you are interested in, any teaching assistants, any tangible jobs that you might have in the past. So all of these things are super useful. Because while I'm first skimming through the resume, I'm trying to see oh, do I see a company or some sort of title that I recognize? Uh, is there anything that says software engineer? And now moving on to the second point. And the next mistake many people make is to make, to make your experience, like the bullet points, use a lot of buzzwords. And it's really hard for interviewers to really understand what you're doing. And it's really easy to spot like, oh, these are just buzzwords. Like these are just verbs that you throw it in there to make it sound fancy. And another mistake that you also have to be careful is to list internal languages internal stacks that you have used that's not actually external facing so for example if i use a very specific tool that's internal to my company and i use the code name for it or whatever internal name as an interviewer i i don't know what you're talking about like i don't know if this is front end or back end like i might just think it's something irrelevant like it might be irrelevant experiences so definitely avoid that try to summarize it try to translate it because the easier you make it for me to read your resume and see like oh you did this with a backend you use some tool that's similar to maybe maven or spring boot like this will help me a lot to understand the type of roles the type of experience you had so i would say like definitely avoid buzzwords but also try to translate it to something that's very easy for me to understand and the next thing that you want to focus on is especially if you have relevant experiences a great way for you to send out is to quantify your accomplishments for example if you put something like oh you improved the overall efficiency for this project or this process this pipeline by 20 percent like that's a great indicator and i might ask you follow-up question oh what happened here like how did you do it like how did you measure it and if you were able to give me a response that makes sense and make it seem like oh you didn't just make up a random number then you know that's a green flag like that that's a really good thing so i would say like definitely try to do it but also don't lie about it because like quantifying it can be very difficult to measure at times that if you didn't really put in the time to calculate it the next mistake is not having a one-page resume I think for a lot of people, especially entry level, unless you are maybe a PhD candidate, of course, like different situation might require a different length of resume. But on average, I think for most people, one page should be what you're looking for. And this one page shouldn't be too crowded, but also shouldn't be too empty. And a lot of times if I see someone talking to me as an undergrad or something like they give me like a two page resume, I'm thinking to myself like, huh, why does it, why is it two page? Like it's already kind of like a red flag that might confuse the interviewer. So you, the last thing you want to do is confuse them. Especially if they look through your resume, they think, oh, this can easily fit in on one page. Then that's like, you know, 
unnecessary thoughts that you letting them think about. Like that's that shouldn't be something that you want them to think about during the very few minutes that you had with them. So you kind of want to leave a great impression, and I think sticking to a one-page resume is very important. Like of course, like it's hard to justify what you can put it down, especially if you're looking for an entry level. So here are my some advice: boot camps, some of the projects you have worked on, hackathon that you have attended, where you worked on some project. All of these are relevant experiences that you can consider putting in on your resume, especially if you're just starting off. And if you're someone who's looking for an internship, then you know courseworks, group projects that you have coded, something that's very complex. These also do qualify that I think you can consider putting on your resume. We don't expect a tons of experiences from you, but of course, if you are applying to a bigger tech company, they want to see that you have proven yourself at a smaller size company first. So I would say definitely keep that in mind. And another thing that I think a lot of people want to avoid on top of that is to don't overlist the number of technical skills that you have. For example, don't list like 20 different programming languages. Stick to the ones that you actually enjoy using and that the one that's, that you want to apply to a job for. The first language on the list should be your most comfortable language. And a lot of times what happens is like, for example, if you put some random languages that you have learned, maybe from a course or maybe from one project that you spend an hour on, it, it might be distracting, especially if the interviewer loves that language or may have a lot of experiences on that language. I myself <laughs> experienced that before. I used to put OCaml on my language list and one time I interviewed with someone and they were like, oh, you did OCaml, like, can you talk to me more about this, like, blah, blah, blah. I was like, oh my god, like, I actually don't remember OCaml, it was like a year ago, like, I don't really remember what happened, like, is it like a, uh... yeah, so like, it's really awkward and uh, a lot of times that's how interviewers try to see, like, oh, would you lie about one thing? If you lied about one thing, then you know, they might discredit a lot of your other things. So I, I say that's definitely something that you want to avoid. It's not that, oh, the more you list, the better it is. The last thing that's pretty easy to avoid now is definitely trying to make sure like there's no careless mistakes, trying to proofread it, try to get someone else to read it for you. And nowadays you can use BART or ChatGPT to help you proofread and trying to help you phrase the sentences a little bit better. So definitely take advantage of these tools out there for your resume and a lot of times like if you use have a grammar like it's not that big of a deal but some interviewers may care a lot more than the other so once again the goal here isn't to distract the interviewer it's not to distract them it's to make it as easy for them to interpret and understand you as possible so i would say these are definitely something that's that you want to avoid so yeah guys to summarize try to avoid these mistakes while focus on relevant experiences and the technical aspect of it. Try to really quantify it, if possible, while not being too distracting. Another tip that I might have for some of you that you, know, you really want to stand out is to tailor your resume towards the company that you're applying for. Because a lot of times they have the job description, they have the key highlight skill that they want you to have. And one easy way is to make it so you include those keywords in the bullet points that you're talking about for some of the projects, some of the job experiences that you have to showcase that, hey, you have these experiences. Of course, this might be a little overboard because like nowadays, most of the time, it's a machine reading your resume, like unless it's at like these conferences. And you know, a lot of times I don't even know what the job descriptions are. So it may not be as necessary or worth it. But I do know people who have done it and they have done really well. So that's something to keep in mind. So yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I will talk to you guys next time.